Uh, thank you, Christoph, and uh, thank you for organizers for giving me a uh, great opportunity talking. And uh, hi, nice to meet you. I'm Atsushi, uh, coming from Japan, Tokyo. And uh, uh, today I wanted to share with you about uh, uh, document generation and uh, localization. And uh, uh, it's uh, introducing myself. I have my business named Moongift in Japan. So, and my main job is uh, agency of developer relations. And uh, so I'm evangelist for my clients and uh, I built some uh, meetup groups and as business. And uh, I'm organizer of DevRelcon Tokyo uh, 2017 and 2018. And uh, how many people uh, joined yesterday at the DevRelcon London? Okay, so uh, maybe did you enjoy it, right? Yes. Okay, so I have same type and the same fantastic event uh, in Japan. <laughs> so uh, please also join it when you come to uh, Tokyo, right? So, and one of my services is uh, consulting the API documents. And some companies provide API documents by PDF or very poor readability documents. So, and they have no ideas about how to update their documents quickly and smoothly. So I help them to create modern API documentation. So today, uh, I want to share with you uh, my just experience. I think this is not the best answer, maybe, but uh, it's a better solution for me and for my client. And uh, this is a realistic solution, not high level and not maybe smart. Yeah? Just my experience. Let's get started. So uh, I want to talk about uh, my client case. Uh, at first, they manage their documents on the GitHub wiki. And uh, it's very minimum quality and simple document. So uh, it doesn't support, uh, uh, maybe they want to support their developers, but uh, uh, this document cannot help uh, their, docu their dev developers. So some developers given up to use APIs or they ask how to use an API every time, but uh, they publish the uh, document already. And uh, GitHub Wiki is a good service and uh, maybe today there is no GitHub right here, right? Okay, okay, so uh, I, I, love, I love GitHub so much, but uh, I think uh, uh, GitHub is not suitable service for API documents. So we can edit the content on the web browser and it supports version management. It looks good, but uh, it's split code and documents. And then it makes difficult to maintenance and GitHub Wiki does, doesn't support localization normally. So we have to copy English original document to Japanese page and translate it by hand every time. And after we update English documents, we need to recognize difference to original uh, document and reflect to Japanese documents every time. So it's very tough. So if you are programmers and uh, you feel maintenance document is too hard, what happened? Uh, it makes an um, undocument APIs. So my client case, uh, their wiki doesn't cover every APIs and every parameters. The programmer updates their system and uh, make a pull request and send to a uh, repository, but uh, uh, they don't update wiki immediately. Because uh, <coughs> wiki has no pull request system, and uh, so they have to update wiki after merge pull request. But they forgot it. Yeah. And my client asked me update their wiki to perfect. But uh, you know, it's a very tough job and uh, I have to check wiki every time and the uh, real APIs and uh, uh, what is different. So it's impossible. So I proposed to my client uh, creating a new document from zero. It has easy maintenance and I said, uh, halfway documents, this time might work and it will be cheat our developers. 
Uh, next, uh, I will talk about uh, document specs. Uh, their documents need to support two languages, English and Japanese. And document has more content, not only APIs, like uh, tutorials, FAQs, getting started, and more. And sure, they want to more easy to manage their documents. So, and maybe, uh, maybe you can't understand why localization is important. Because you can speak English and you can read English natively, don't care about it. But the non-native English speaker, like Japanese, needs uh, native language documents so much. And document is very difficult to understand completely, even if it, it is written by native language, like English. Further, uh, it will be more difficult to understand documents is written by non-native languages. Sometimes, the, uh, sometimes developer ask me something uh, that we already wrote the document, but they ask me. So I said, I already wrote your answer here with link. So uh, they look just sentence that they want. But uh, it's natural, I think. So uh, if I load the document in Japanese, it's happened. But uh, if the document is written by non-native language, like uh, English, uh, developer will ask me more. So, and in Japan, uh, uh, in Japan, no, no. In Japan, uh, our English speaking rate is very low. Our government said it's uh, 12%. Uh, they got English education from junior school uh, to university. Maybe they learned about English uh, eight or 10 years, but uh, most Japanese have no opportunity to speak English and uh, work in English with foreigners. So they have no need to speak English normally. And one-time translation is very easy. When we have a completely English document, we send it to a uh, translation servicer. A few days later, we got the completely Japanese document and we will upload it. It's very easy. But the updating document is very difficult. I already talked about it uh, when we English document have updated, we don't translate everything again. We have to get difference with original document and we translate difference and merge it in, in, uh, in Japanese documents. It's very tough job and high cost. So, and uh, I want to convey you uh, it that translation and localization is completely different. Uh, Japanese is more shorter than English document in many cases. Sometimes we omit the subject in Japanese sentence. So English sentence is more like a redundant than Japanese. And English, English sentence is more passionate than Japanese. Like uh, they write great, brilliant, awesome, and incredible <laughs> in their documents. But so many times, but most Japanese documents don't use those words, right? So when I translate documents from English to Japanese, I have to cut so many words <laughs> from <laughs> English sentence. By the way, I know Japanese are strongly emotionally and uh, passionate in the manga or animation, but uh, our API document is not <laughs> very <laughs> gentry, right? So. And uh, uh, this is not really my slide, but uh, I, I found out a manga about writing APIs. The title is Running API with Manga. Yeah? <laughs> the manga is easy, easiest way to read the textbook, right? So it's uh, suitable for beginner or uh, newbie of programmers, right? So uh, it's good content for us. Back to slide, uh, API document is hard to translate for general translation companies. Technical terms are not general word, like uh, APIs, OS tokens, JSON, methods, response, and more. Currently, Google or uh, many service provider uh, provide a uh, machine translation service, but it's not natural and uh, suitable for technical term yet. 
So, and many developers have tried to improve, not forget updating API documents when they updated the code. One sort of answer is a document in the code. Uh, yes, it's a good solution. The developers don't forget document updating because code and documents are very close. But uh, there are some problems. One big problem is uh, developer and brilliant writers. They don't want to wrong sentence on the, their code. So it will disturb their work. And uh, when programmers make a new API that return a response of items, uh, maybe they wrote the uh, summaries, return uh, items, right? It's a very simple and the best, it's uh, correct, but uh, who hope it? So uh, definitely document maintenance worker have to update the document every time and they are not programmer, and, but, but they have to read the code and uh, they have to understand what do API do. And uh, they update the document and uh, send a pull request. It's tough. And uh, another problem is most document generators doesn't support uh, international localization, like localization, and just one language, like uh, English or uh, Japanese. So uh, if document generators support international localization, programmers have to write more documents th on the code. So like uh, in, this is a very simple example. Uh, red, uh, red line is a document and blue line is a code. So programmers have to write uh, many contents of documents than code. So uh, this is a uh, architecture in my project case. Uh, original system have API already, and uh, I make a Swagger document from real APIs. I know currently we should use an uh, uh, open API spec, but uh, not Swagger. But my project is uh, last year, so there is no open API spec standard in that time. So after generating Swagger document, I generate to uh, markdown documents from Swagger document. At the time, I use a get text. You know the get text? It's a, a software of international localization. And it uses configuration files that use key and value. In this case, key is an English sentence and value is a Japanese sentence. So I generated English and Japanese markdown files in the same time. And finally, markdown files are uh, used by static site generators. Uh, we choose uh, MK docs as static site generators. I will talk about that later. So uh, I want to talk about APIs and Swagger. In my case, uh, we have developed Kitchen Sync app by JavaScript. It covers every APIs and every parameters. And it uses our JavaScript SDKs. And this app is for uh, our developers. But uh, uh, they can learn about how to use API and JavaScript SDK easily. So I use it for documentation also. I made a tool named car to swagger It's a very simple tool. It generates Swagger YAML from car command and API response JSON. And uh, it's a uh, open source software, so you can use it. So, but uh, sadly, it just supports Swagger format, uh, not open API spec format. So when I use the Kitchen Sync app on the Google Chrome, and it's called each APIs, and uh, I open the uh, developer tool on the Chrome, I can confirm each network access in the network tab. And I click it by right, and that uh, shows that uh, context menu. And uh, I choose the copy as car. Then I can get the completely perfect car command like this. And I also copy API response, uh, like a, a copy response, like that. After that, paste it to the uh, car command and the API response. Then uh, generate Swagger YAML. 
by light. This should par, uh, this should pass car command by command pass passing library for getting domains, paths, parameters, HTTP method, and other HTTP headers. And also passing response JSON for consulting, uh, constructing Swagger response. By this tool, I can generate Swagger YAML from real APIs very smoothly. And next step is uh, generating Markdown document with get text from Swagger YAML. I made a tool again named Swagger to Markdown. First tool is a uh, uh, car to Swagger, and this tool is a uh, Swagger to YAML. Uh, no, 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 so Swagger to Markdown. It's very simple, right? So uh, this tool also uh, open source software, and this tool is passing Swagger YAML, and many program languages support passing YAML, and uh, I, gen I make this tool by JavaScript, and JavaScript also support uh, passing YAML and picking up each sentence from YAML file. A first time execution, every sentence uh, become key of get text. And sure, values are nothing yet, so each keys and values are same, like this. So uh, MSG, MSG ID is a key and uh, MSG STL is a value. So, and uh, this tool saves key and value file as PO file, like JA.PO. JA.PO means Japanese PO file. The PO file is used by translating from long ago. It's a standard format for international localization. After generating PO file, I've edited the file like this, uh, red lines. If I want to translate the sentence, I change it. But uh, if I want to use original sentence, like pass, I don't need changing it. So PO file is very simple key and value file, so anyone can understand how to update it. After update PO file, I execute Swagger to Markdown again. This will load PO file uh, before generating Markdown files and replace each sentence for publishing. If you want to aim perfect international localizations, you should create en.po file for English developers. Uh, this is uh, uh, another my client's example. Uh, they are global SaaS company, maybe you know their name and uh, um, <coughs> they are using CSV, CSV file for international localization, like that. So they use key on their document, like uh, api.item.names. And uh, I got the English term and uh, translate to Japanese. They support variable in that value, like uh, uh, percent count, right? And uh, in, in English, singular and plural term is different, like uh, item and items. But in Japan, uh, it's not. It, uh, so we use the uh, uh, same, uh, same term. So each language has different rules. So I have to translate each term for each country. So uh, we got the markdown file. I'm talking about the static site generators. Uh, we know it's, uh, there are so many tools can display Swagger file as HTML page. But I talk again, those tools don't support multiple languages. But uh, many, sub, uh, many static site generators support Markdown, and so Markdown format is almost standard format for developers. So we choose a Markdown format for API documents. And we wanted to append content uh, to developers' documents, like uh, tutorials, getting started, and more. Many cases, we see uh, uh, separating the documents, like uh, getting started and API documents. Perhaps, uh, I guess it uses the uh, document generators. I think it's not suitable for developers. They have to check each document, uh, APIs or SDKs or tutorials, so, so many documents. It makes the mistakes or misunderstanding. 
And uh, why I choose uh, MK Docs? Sorry, it has no meaning. Uh, I like uh, MK Docs because it's very simple and uh, uh, developed by Python, so I can customize very easily. So uh, I know we can select other tool like uh, GQ, but uh, it's like a blog. So and uh, my cl my another client uses GQ for uh, their developer documents, and but uh, I like more simple one. So uh, wrap up. In this case, uh, Kitchen Sink app is very useful tool for my job, and it is also useful for developers. Sometimes document is wrong or there is a miss sentence but the SDK or app is every time right. Sure, uh, maybe uh, JavaScript SDKs have some bug, but uh, uh, it's okay, so uh, developers can fix it. And uh, <coughs> programmers are not great writers, so I don't write uh, document in the code. So uh, programming comment is good, but uh, it's, it is for coworkers, so not document, right? And localization. It's very important non-native English developers, including me. So <coughs> sometimes the developers make a misreading even though they are native speakers. And if they are non-native speakers, uh, there are more misreading. So if you want to transfer information about your APIs to non-native English developers, you should translate your documents, their native languages, like uh, Japanese, German, Chinese, and more. At the time, you should consider about updating documents carefully, very, very carefully. One time translating is very simple and very easy, but the constantly updating is very difficult. So many companies given up. And uh, this is the last. Oh, so I, <laughs> sorry, uh, I have uh, no hiring slides, but uh, <laughs> our conference. So DevCon Tokyo need your great CFP so much. So uh, you can buy the ticket and meet, meet us uh, on the DevCon Tokyo. The match is best season in Japan. <laughs> we can see a uh, uh, cherry blossom if you are lucky, right? <laughs> it's very short term, just one week or two two weeks. You know? yeah. So uh, thank you for attention.